Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this watercolour landscape painting. This is all part of my watercolour landscape painting series, so make sure you check that out. And I'm going to jump straight into the painting today. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked today's video and leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of this tutorial. To begin with for this painting, I wanted to create a really vibrant turquoise. To do this, I mixed together a really nice bright blue with quite a bit of white so that it was more on the pastel side. I think if you've just got the blue and then lighten it with lots of water, you'll just have a really light blue. It's not going to have that turquoise element and therefore it's just going to look slightly off in comparison to the colour in the reference photo. So I added that white just to give it that pastel effect and I love this colour. I can't say I've ever used this colour before so to have it for this painting was extra special. And following the reference photo and outline that I'd already created for this painting, I added in all the sections where I could visibly see this turquoise. I'm really taking my time to do this, working the colour section at a time. I started from the top, mainly the roof section this colour was needed for and I worked my way down. There's multiple roof sections so I think this made it a little bit easier to identify where it would be if you can't really spot it from the reference photo. That's something to bear in mind if you just follow the structure of the roof. It's a lot easier to know where to put the colour but if you can follow the reference photo and get this down where needed and the trick for painting this building is working colour at a time you don't want to go in with all the colours at once as everything will bleed together and you want all the separation of colours especially for a building as everything's very clean cut once I was happy with all the turquoise that I'd added down I then created a nice golden yellow and to do this I mixed lemon yellow with the tiniest drop of red just to provide that little bit of warmth for the golden aspect and then I dotted this into all of the places it's needed following the reference photo and you don't need too much detail for this as it's really small so it's really hard to even get this down in the first place I'm taking my time just adding in the dots where necessary not worrying too much about the rest of the detail I then allowed a little bit of drying time for the building before I went in with any more colour so I decided to start painting some of the trees that you can see towards the bottom of the page I decided to create the cherry blossoms to begin with as I think these really stood out amongst the rest of the colours. So I created two different versions of pink. One had a lot of white added to it but one had even more so it was very much a blush colour as light as possible. I also created a really nice dark brown, added a little bit of blue to some brown to make it as dark and deep as possible. And then I went in with the lightest pink and began dotting this down into the section where the blossoms were. I kept my dots as small as possible as this is the best way to capture that detail without actually doing too much. If you go in with bigger dots it looks a little bit less detailed so the smaller the better for this. I also made sure I had some of the branches added down with that dark brown. You want to keep these lines as thin as possible. The reference photo and outline are going to really help identify where this brown needs to go especially the outline. I mapped in a few little lines where you can follow. Get these lines in there just so you know where all of that dark section falls. I wasn't too worried about the dots overlapping either. I think this adds a really nice texture to this but like I say I went in with the lighter section to begin with and then added a little bit of that darker pink. You definitely want more of the lighter pink added down though so just be conscious of this. I think it's really easy to assume that you want that darker pink because it's more vibrant but in reality that light pink does the job just fine and contrasting on the white paper you can still really see the pink element even though there wasn't a lot of pink added to that really light pink that we pre-mixed. Once I was happy with all the layer of pink added down and by this I mean filled in all of the negative space where that cherry blossom area falls, I then went in with a little bit of that dark brown and blended some of this within that pink just to add a little bit more shadow to the piece. Jumping back now to the building I then created a cream colour so I added a drop of yellow to a lot of white as we've previously done with a lot of colours today. And I added this into the really light sections of the building. Again, we don't want to go in with any darker colours yet, so we can let this dry and then go in and add all that detail later on. I then created some really nice autumn colours, so red, yellow, earthy greens, and I worked these into all of the 
areas down below where all the bushes fall section at a time as I previously did with the cherry blossoms. I wasn't too worried about mixing these colours either as if you look at the reference photo they generally do mix quite a lot. So if one area was more red I'd add red down first and then go in with the rest of the colours and kind of blend all that together. So that's what I mean about working section at a time. Wherever there's more of one colour treat that as a particular section in comparison to an area that has another colour. Once I was confident that the rest of the building had dried I then jumped back into this with that dark brown that we pre-mixed earlier for all of the branches and I use this to start mapping in all of that detail and this is going to neaten everything up, tidy everything together and also get the appropriate shadows in. The hardest part of doing this is getting that colour around the yellow in my opinion as I think because the yellow was really small to begin with, mapping around that can be really difficult so don't be too hard on yourself if this is something that you do struggle with as it was something that I did and I ended up painting over some of the yellow by accident but that definitely did not take away from the finished piece and no one's going to notice if you do end up having to do that. Obviously the less you can do it the better but don't worry if that is something that you do end up having to do. The trick is to get the lines as smooth as possible. If you can do this the lines will appear more clean cut and it neatens everything up and this is really important for buildings as everything is usually very straight and neat so to be able to do this is just going to tie everything together and make it very obvious that this is a building. It just tidies it up in that way, makes it very obvious what it is you are painting. So once you're happy with all the lines that you've added in, filling in all of the space, you can add the windows in as well by using this brown but watering it down a little bit as I think the windows are slightly lighter than the rest of this really dark detail that we are adding. So having that colour combination, not having everything be exactly the same is a really good way to show the appropriate shadows and still have it look like a building. It's very obvious now what we have painted. Once you're happy with how the building looks, you can then jump back in and continue adding dots of all of the different colours to replicate all of the different trees and bushes that are down towards the bottom of the page. My favourite thing about this section was blending all the colours. I loved blending the yellow into the green for example, so if anything was really bright with that yellow and use that to begin with particularly around the top of the bushes where the sun was hitting each section and then that kind of blends down into the green so I'd blend the yellow down with all the dots and then add some green going back up into this and I love the colour combination and how this looks overall and then when you had the really light shadows above that you could have a bush that was slightly darker so having all of these different separate sections and having them blend together while still looking really separate I thought was really beautiful and I loved creating this element. Still painting in the branches where necessary as well, more for the trees though rather than the bushes. The bushes it's just a lot of dotted work which is really simple to do and you can really distinctly see the bushes and the trees as we're working section at a time separating everything up and I loved having that yellow tree towards the bottom and the middle. I loved that area in particular, it's to the right of that cherry blossom on the left hand side. I loved the way this looked with the really vibrant colours. It just brought everything to life, adding section at a time. Once you're happy with everything else, you can then start adding in smaller details that kind of get overlooked. For example, there's a small lamppost that could be added towards the bottom of the page, slightly to the left hand side. I mapped that in with a really dark brown paint, the same one that we used for the branches, just to get all that detail in. And then I actually added the cream that we used for the light sections of the building earlier on and I used this for the lighter sections of said lamppost. I was very careful that these didn't bleed together though as you don't want the colours that are so contrasting to touch and then merge together especially when it's painting something so distinctive. And then I continued creating the rest of the painting in terms of all of these beautiful vibrant colours and trees. On the left hand side of the painting I put a lot of yellow and green down in particular I think this blended really well together across that side of the page I added some branches in later on once that had a little bit of drying time and then dotted in some brown and went back in with the green and the yellow and the reason that I did this in this order was to have the branches stand out a little bit I think they got a little bit lost earlier on so it's mixing up 
up the steps that we take in order to define certain areas so if you are wanting the branches to be darker allowing that drying time but then also going back in and blending may be a good idea once we're happy with all the elements we've added so far to finish this area i created a mint green using the earth green that we used earlier and adding a lot of white to this and the reason that I created this colour so late on was to add just a different element to this painting. We've got a lot of colours going on already but just this final one really helps tie everything together and I got this into all of the negative space and then added a little bit of earth green into that as well. Looking towards the top of the painting also I added a layer of water down. This is to incorporate the wet in wet method so that light layer of water means that the paint is going to spread and bleed out really easily and then of course went in with a really nice light blue I watered this down to get it as light as possible dotted this down added a little bit more where I wanted a couple of clouds to form but aside from that spread everything out very evenly to finish this painting I went around all of the edges with a light layer of water spread this very evenly section at a time so I went across every single edge in four stages and just dotted in all of the colours that we've used. I love the effect of this, I think it brought the painting completely to life and just added that element of vibrancy and colour. And tied everything together really nicely and made for a really cohesive finish. Brought the water right up to the edge of the painting and made sure I added a few more dots more towards where the painting actually comes out from so that the edge wasn't as harsh so you've got the bleed of all the colour and paint coming out from the actual painting and that was a really good way to tie everything together to finish. And that is how I created this watercolour landscape. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. You'll also find links to all of my social media down below, including my Patreon, where you can find the full real-time playback of this tutorial. So if that's something that you're interested in and want to learn how to paint this landscape in more detail, make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!